Hi, Charlie Thorburn here from More Dog Undogs. On this video, we're going to be tra training with an older dog, a dog that is already trained and has maybe had a bit of time off and it's about how to get a dog back, on, back in shape and back on form. So helping us this week, hopefully, maybe hindering us, is Pansy. Uh, Pansy is one of our mums. Uh, I bred her. Uh, we've had puppies from her. She's actually now a granny as well. Um, so tell you a little bit about Pansy. So she was uh, very much one of, she's very much one of my main picking up dogs, but maybe last season I didn't get to do as much picking up as I might like to, because I spent more time doing YouTube videos. Um, so Pansy didn't get worked as much as she might have done. Um, she very much spends time in the house these days. She's sort of semi-retired. She still works, but she lives in the house. So is a little bit spoiled, gets away with a little bit more than she might have done in the past. And then um, she came in season. She couldn't be in the house because that's a pain. Uh, didn't want to put her back in the main kennels because, you know, just uh, the sort of hierarchy and things in the kennels has been she was the boss and then she left. So one of her daughters has stepped up and there's a sort of nice settled hierarchy in the kennels. We don't want that disturbed by her coming back in in season, which obviously they're all a bit more chest puffed out and excitable when they're and and, and, and up for trouble when they're in season because they're like, oh, I'm the alpha female and I want to be bred and everything else. So what we did was we put her in the, um, we put her in the puppy kennels, away in a quiet area. So the problem with the puppy kennels is once they're in there, it's a kind of uh, sec high security kind of, in terms of you know, biosecurity, we dip our feet, wash our hands, etc. So once she'd had a bath and she'd gone in there, she wasn't then coming out again and they have their own exercise pens and stuff. So she wasn't coming out training, she wasn't coming out with the group, she was in season. So she's basically been in there for a bit. So she's had half a shooting season, then slightly been lounging around the house and then she was in season and she's really done nothing. So she hasn't been going for like big walks and stuff, she's just been going into the exercise paddocks. So she's definitely a little bit full of beans. She's just come out of there today. So she's not really seen much of me um, because um, luckily I've got, I've got uh, uh, lovely helpers who are much better at looking after the, the puppies and keeping it all clean and tidy than I am. So she's not really seen me. So she's kind of like, oh, I'm out with dad and this is all exciting. Spring's here, she's ready to go, but she's gonna be trouble, okay? And what do I mean by trouble? You know, she walks to heel and she sits and stuff, but she's just being a bit silly and she'll probably try and do silly things. So how do, what do we do about it? Well, we start off with the, always with the basic. Just make sure she's walking with a nice loose lead, okay? Now she has literally not been on a lead probably for about three years. But you can see we've come straight out of the kennel and she's just, she knows exactly what that heel word is, what, what she's meant to do with the lead. So we then take the lead off. As the lead comes off, if there's any like, oh, I'm gonna run off, it would be on her case. She's not gonna do that, hopefully, heel. She's pushing in front of me a bit, so I'm just gonna stride out a little bit, go a bit further and we'll head off for a walk with her. Her heel works pretty good. If I go into a little trot, she should stay with me. If I slow down, she should slow down. But as soon as she's not, straight out, I'm on her case, okay? And just even that little moment of me leaning towards her, I didn't even have to tap her on the bum. Just a little like, oh yeah, it's dad, he's back on my case. I'm sure my kids think the same. They're like, oh God, dad's here, he's on my case. My wife certainly does. Annoyingly for you, but actually her healing is pretty good. But she's, you know, she's an older dog. She's, what, she far, maybe six? Looking a little bit fat sitting there as well. She's a good time off over the winter, sit. So we do a sit and a stay with her. I'm very much treating her like a one-year-old dog. So a dog who's got a good level of training, but they're not just 100% reliable. So I'm watching her out the corner of my eye all the time and I'm just going over all those basic rules, those basic commands, going back to her. Tell her she's a good girl. You can see she likes to jump up on me. I think this is just because she hasn't seen me for a while. Stop it. But I don't want to allow that. And I've missed her too, but sit. No, no, no. Sit. Now, sit whistle. So we've done healing on the lead, off the lead. We've done sit and stay. So now we're going to do a sit whistle. So the reintroduction to the sit whistle. We're going to treat it like she's not heard her sit whistle for six months, which she hasn't. So heel, 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 heel. 
So three or four just at my heel. So now I'm gonna do something that I uh, tell people not to do, uh, which is call a dog off a sit and stay. I always say, sit the dog down and always, always go back to them. Okay, this is the one in a hundred time that I'm not going to. And I'm gonna call her off, Pansy. As she, ah, ch -ch 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 -ch, Pansy, Pansy, come here. She's ready to go for a retrieve. Sit, sit up, that's enough, sit. So I called her to me, blew the stop whistle, that's enough, that's enough. Being a real pain, jumping up, sit, sit. Gonna do it again. Sit. Called her to me as I blew the sit whistle, sit. I put that pressure on her to make sure she stopped. So she's sitting at my heel, she's sitting a little bit of a distance. Now I'm gonna let her run around a bit and see if she sits just when she's having a bit of fun. Off you go, go on, go on, go on. Girl, off you go. So I'm building her up in, in stages. Now we're gonna sit up, sit. We're gonna do a retrieve, okay? So we're gonna throw one over there behind the camera and we're gonna throw one down here. And we're gonna see if she stops on the whistle. I think it's about 50-50. That's my betting, a 50-50 chance she's gonna do it. The closer to me I stop her, the better our chances. The further, the closer the dummy, the worse my chances. Pansy. Sit. Out. Now her reward for sitting, so I should have put my, I should have bet the house on it. Have more trust in your dog. Her reward for sitting is she gets the retrieve, okay? Now she didn't, some of you are gonna go, oh, but she didn't sit. No, she didn't sit. You're absolutely right. And as an older dog, sit. I don't care. As a young dog who's learning to sit on the whistle, it's really important that they sit. Where she just stopped and she looked at me and waited for that command. Pansy. Good girl, good girl, sit, sit up. So those are the first two dummies she's had probably since September, okay? Um, so that's the reality of a family dog more than the reality of a gun dog with a gun dog trainer who's out training on a regular basis. This is an older retired dog who doesn't get trained every day and doesn't train all the time. Now the point of this is, is that she's actually been pretty good, but I literally have done nothing with her, okay? And you can tell that by the amount of jumping up she's doing, which is driving me mad. Stop it, stop it. You're being really naughty at that. You're being really good at everything else and really naughty at that. Um, so the amount of, uh, she's had absolutely no training. She's jumping up at me because she's just super keen for my attention, as you can see. Um, but what, what, what it shows is that by going through a little sim simple set of drills, okay, walking at a heel. <laughs> Stop it. Sit, sit, sit up. On the lead, off the lead, sitting on the whistle on the lead, sitting on the whistle off the lead, sitting on the whistle a bit further away. Building her up through those little revision stages means that when you ask her to do something more complicated, she's sort of back in the mindset of work and thinking about what she should be doing. And it's a little bit like if you guys go on holiday, whether you go on holiday for a week or a month, if you come back in and be thrown right into the most complicated bit of your work, you're a bit like, oh God. But if you just kind of answer a few emails on the flight home and just get back into the swing of it, by Monday morning, you know, you're not far away from being back where you were a few weeks before. So just building up those, those stages and, and testing her and not going straight out and trying to stop her on the way out to retrieve because she hasn't done any practice, but instead, practicing with some things that you know you know that she's likely to get right, but we can just step, do it sort of stepping stone way of getting into the complicated things, and you're 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 setting herself up, setting her up for success, not failure, because your su success comes from little gains all the time. There's a very uh, lovely speech uh, on the internet that I um, on YouTube that I play to my eldest son on the way to work. <laughs> oh God. Uh, and it's a, by an American uh, admiral who was, a, who was a Navy SEAL. And his, uh, his thing is, if you get up in the morning, always make your bed. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. 
It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made, <laughs> that you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. So if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. Because that one little thing, that one little achievement, then sets into another little achievement and another one. And even if you have a really bad day, you come back to a made bed and you get to have a nice sleep in a, in a, in a freshly made bed. Training dogs and re, re, revision and revising with older dogs is kind of the same. Those, every time you make a little achievement, a little step, you're just, it snowballs. It's like building momentum for success or a bit like compounding interest with your money in a bank account. It just gets bigger and bigger and better and better and more and more consistent, it was almost forced to go in the right direction. Whereas if you come out and you kind of haphazardly blow a whistle at a random time that you haven't blown at a dog for ages, when they're about to chase a hare and you go, oh, the dog didn't listen to the whistle. Of course, they didn't bloody, bloody listen to the whistle. You haven't blown the whistle at it. You haven't practiced. So you've got to be reality. A bit like I haven't practiced stopping Pansy jumping up. And I need to do a lot of practice because otherwise you and me are going to fall out, aren't you? And you won't get to come back in the house because Mrs. T will murder you if you start doing this to her. She will, yes. Anyway, I hope you've all learned something. Um, thanks for watching. And remember, you get out what you put in. And uh, Pansy's persist persistence that she's put in of jumping up has won, the, won over. And she's now just going to get a cuddle from me. So we'll see you all next time.